Hayao Miyazaki's movies are well known and loved by the kids and adults alike all around the world and the um, environmental themes in them are pretty obvious and quite easily understandable, but the religious origins of those themes might not be as easy to get for foreign viewers. That's why in this video I want to talk about what aspects of Japanese religion music he chose to use in his movies to portray his environmental beliefs. But out of the two main Japanese religions being Buddhism and Shintoism, I'm only going to talk about um, Shintoism in this video because talking about both of them would take too much time. And I'm biased, I'm gonna just choose the one that I prefer. <laughs> To start off, we need to know what exactly Shintoism, or Shinto, how it's called in Japanese, is. Shintoism is an indigenous religion of Japan and it's considered to be a natural one, meaning it wasn't created by anyone on purpose and it doesn't have a founder. It was created by all the scattered beliefs of the Japanese archipelago and compiled into one more or less cohesive religion. The basis of the religion is a belief that everything around us could be inhabited and be in fact a god or a kami, how they're called in Japanese. A kami could be anything, from a sun, tree, river, or a fox, or a mirror, also a person after death could become one as well. Gods could be inhabiting everything, but the most common and important ones are connected to some aspects of nature. Kami are basically an essence of a particular object or phenomenon, and they can interact with the world around them as well as with the humans. They don't exist somewhere separately, like the Christian god does, for example, but rather they live everywhere among people. Japanese kami are completely different beings than what Christianity and, from what I know, Islam and Judaism too understand as God. They are not almighty, all-knowing, immortal beings existing in some different realm than people. No, they are more powerful than people, but they can be just as flawed as people can be, and they are not inherently good, like Christian God is said to be. And we can actually see that clearly in the characters of Spirits of the Forest in Princess Mononoke. They stopped caring about humans completely and are focused solely on defeating them in order to protect the forest and themselves. Also, the gods portrayed in Spirited Away have the same quality to them. They are not good nor bad either, they are neutral and they just want to protect what is important to them. It especially is obvious in an example of you, Baba, who to me always resembled more of a businesswoman focused on doing what she thinks is the best for her business and family rather than a villain. As of today, there is a big group of Japanese kamis that are recognized all around Japan and are established as the main ones, the most important ones, and they are known by almost every Japanese person. But alongside those, there is also an array of local gods known only for the people living in certain areas. And actually, Totoro could be interpreted as one of them. He especially resembles a kind of god called Ujigami. Ujigami is a type of a guardian god, typically of a certain family or neighborhood. And actually, I think that is why Miyazaki called the movie My Neighbor Totoro, indicating that nature and kamis that personify it are our neighbors and should be treated as such. Ujigami are the gods worshipped in hope of protection from any misfortune and sickness, and that is basically what Totoro is to Satsuki and Mei. He lives in a tree near the girl's house, and the trees as well as specific rocks, rivers, valleys, or any piece of nature can be considered a place where the gods live, and then it will be decorated with a rope called Shimenawa, which is a way to indicate a holiness of a place or a thing. And we can see a Shimenawa around the Totoro tree, so we can be sure that the creatures living there are some kind of kami. The relationship between Totoro and the girls is a picture-perfect one that Miyazaki would like for all of us to have with nature. Totoro is loved and respected by the girls, and because of that he is favorable towards them and helps them. Through the relationship Miyazaki shows how it should look like, but unfortunately this type of connection with nature and the gods is long gone in today's Japanese society, and the way of living that he idolizes in my neighbor Totoro in most parts of the country is long forgotten. To truly understand the relationship between people and the gods, we need to understand what exactly we are to them. Comparing it to Christianity again, in this religion people are the creation of the god, but in Shintoism it's not exactly the case. The most important information about the creation of Japan and alongside it, its people and kami, we can find in two oldest Japanese chronicles called Kojiki and Nihongi, both written around the 8th century. Thanks to the myths included in them, we can learn about the lineage of both gods and people inhabiting Japan, and I think this is the most important reason for the particular relationship that people have with the gods and through them with nature as well. In those chronicles we learn that at the beginning of everything was a marriage between two gods of creation, Izanami and Izanagi. They created all islands in Japan as well as every bit of nature and living creatures inhabiting it. 
They made gods living in the skies who are the most important ones of the pantheon as well as the ancestors of the Japanese imperial family. Izanami and Izanagi also created all the gods living on the islands who in turn are in a way the ancestors of the regular Japanese people. And that creates a very interesting bond between people and the kami because we came directly from them but we weren't created by them. We kind of just evolved from the gods and that makes us below them because they're more powerful than us and there is this kind of ancestor descendant relationship between people and kami but at the end of the day we're not that much different from each other because we were put on this earth by the same creative force izanami and izanagi and as i said previously they are not almighty all-knowing immortal beings they can be just as flawed as people can be and they can be kind and willing people well but also they can be quite vengeful and selfish especially if they're provoked. And that kind of selfishness of the gods is portrayed in a myth talking about Amaterasu, the goddess of the sun hiding from the world in the cave which resulted in a period of darkness. The goddess of the sun is one of the three main gods of Japanese pantheon, and other two being god of the moon, Tsukuyomi, and the god of the storms and seas, Susano. Though out of the three of them, she is the most important one. She is the master of the kingdom in the skies, as well as the ancestor of the imperial family. But even she is not perfect though. When her brother Susano, known for his mischief, because he's basically Loki of Shintoism, pulled a prank on her, she got so annoyed and embarrassed that she hid in a cave, basically making everyone live in the darkness because she was so mad at her brother. Her court, the gods living in the skies, tried to get her out of her hiding, but she would refuse each time. She finally got out of there when another goddess called Amano Uzume stripped naked and started dancing which made other gods gathered in front of the cave laugh so hard Amaterasu got curious about what was happening there. In my opinion, it just shows how flawed God's characters could be. Amaterasu didn't care that she was making gods and other people suffer. She only cared that she was disrespected by her brother and hid in a cave like a drama queen just to get out of there when some other tea started happening outside. In this story, we can clearly see how the gods and the nature that they personify have direct impact on human lives, but at the same time, people's actions have direct impact on gods as well. And even though in this story it was another god that angered Amaterasu, it translates into humans' actions too. While abusing nature and through that the kami as well, people are directly affecting them and that can lead to them taking revenge and basically nature backfiring. In my opinion through that Shinto is trying to say that nature is there for people to use it, but not abuse it. And people can try finding help in gods and, and the nature, but once you try to abuse that help, the nature is going to become an enemy to you rather than your ally. And that is actually a basic premise of Princess Mononoke. The movie shows three different fronts of the conflict. First, we start with Emishi, the people of our main character, Ashitaka. They live with nature in harmony and peace. They use trees to build their homes and they farm the land, but they don't abuse it and so the gods are favorable towards them. On the other end of that lies the Iron Town, which started to see nature as something to profit from, to overuse without thinking about the consequences. They stopped thinking about nature as something sacred, stopped worshipping it and treating it with care. They started abusing it and then even attacking when the nature tried to fight back. Those two societies show the old traditions and what Miyazaki thinks is a proper way of looking at nature, portrayed through Emishi, and the new ways in which Japan of today treats nature. With the Iron Town, Miyazaki shows us how modern society disregards and abuses the environment and how far the Japan of today has drifted from its own traditions and beliefs. He is not an extremist, though. He shows us forces of the nature being vengeful, unforgiving and just as destructive as people can be. He doesn't see a victory in complete defeat of humans though. He sees it in the harmonious life of the forest and the people in Iron Town. And that is basically what's being hinted at at the end of the movie, though it actually happening is not certain and it might be just a wishful thinking regarding the situation in the movie, but also the situation in the real world. Another theme that Miyazaki likes to use in his movies is the theme of separation between people and the nature or people and the gods that is also an idea apparent in Shintoism too. I have already talked about the Shimenawa, the ropes that are used to signal to the believers that a particular object or a piece of nature is considered to be inhabited by a god. But that is not the only way in which Japanese people separate sacred places from the mortal world. And actually the most important symbol of Shintoism is Tori Gate and that gate basically indicates from here on you go into the place of the gods. And that kind of separation was very important back in the day when a lot of things could be considered polluting to religious places and so should be kept away from them. 
Shinto shrines are more often than not surrounded by nature. Most of them have some kind of gardens, forests, they're built on the mountains or are near the lake or the sea. That kind of separation between the human world and the world of the kami, more industrialized or urbanized world, and the world of nature and tradition is visible in Miyazaki's movies as well. The Totoro tree has a shimenawa and you can see the tori gate leading to it in a scene where the girls go to pay respect to the tree with their father. The separation of the two worlds is not very visible in this movie though, because Miyazaki shows it in a truly harmonious way of living, which he thinks is the proper one. One where people live with the gods and nature surrounded by them, not against them. That is why we don't really see much difference between a holy place where Totoro lives and the rest of the village. The separation is more visible in Spirited Away though. There is no trace of the gods in the city Chihiro's family drives through. They only start to appear once they step away from the concrete roads and into the forest path, leading away from the modern world and closer to the world of the gods. Then Chihiro had to go through the big gate-like abandoned building that they find in the middle of said forest. That I think might symbolize a Tori gate. We can clearly see a big difference between human world and the other realm. In order to find their way into the world of the gods, they had to step away from the today's Japan full of pollution and urbanization and drive through the nature. Pollution is also an apparent issue of Shintoism, but it's a bit different from what modern people think of it today. According to Shinto beliefs, many things could be considered polluting to the gods and so should be kept away from the sacred places. And if we wanted to be very strict, the list could be very long, but the most important ones and the most polluting ones were blood and death. And so obviously women each month were too polluted to go anywhere near the shrines or temples. And that is also a reason why gods in Spirited Away basically freaked out when they saw blood on Chihiro's hand. The origin of this belief is a myth regarding the creation of three main gods of Shintoism as well as the death of Izanami. She died giving birth to the god of fire and Izanagi wishing to see her again went to the land of the dead to bring her back to life. When they met though, she says that she has already eaten the food of the underworld and so will not be able to come back with him. Very similar theme appears in Spirited Away when Haku makes Chihiro eat a blueberry in order to make her not disappear so that she could live in the world of the kami. Going back to the myth though, Izanami asked Izanagi not to light up fire in order not to look at her properly. He does so regardless and sees his wife in a state of a rotting corpse. Because she felt disrespected, she chases him away and after he managed to escape, Izanagi felt contaminated. He decided to purify himself in order to wash off everything from the underworld and while performing this ritual, many gods came into existence. And among them were the most important ones of Shintoism. Amaterasu appeared when he washed his left eye, Tsukuyomi came from his right eye, and Susano appeared when he washed his nose. For many years following Izanagi's example, people also took part in similar purification rituals, and in today's Shintoism it is visible in tradition of washing your hands and mouth before stepping into the shrine grounds. In Princess Mononoke we can see something similar in a lake in the middle of a forest that to some degree helps with Ashitaka's contaminated hand and heals him. Some scholars even claim that those lakes actually existed and were a place to perform rituals in earlier days of Shintoism. The belief of ritual purification is much more apparent in Spirited Away though, as an entire plot is centered around the bathhouse for the gods where they somewhat perform the ritual purification on them. The reason for their need for the bath seems to be completely different from what was traditionally considered dirty though. From the scenes where the gods complain about Chihiro's human scent, and the scene with the stink spirit that turned out to be a river god, we can deduce that the main reason for the gods' need of purification is the urbanization and industrialization of the human world and the effect that it has on the nature and through that on them too. The contamination doesn't come from the natural things that were considered dirty in the past. Now it seems to come from the disregarding behavior of people towards nature and their strive for progress regardless of the consequences. And that is why Jihiro herself is not dirty to the gods, they're only put off by her smell, which they say is going to go away with a few days on their diet. Meaning that it's not the pure fact that she's a human that makes her stinky, it's the life in the human world that does. Also the fact that the last bit separating the bathhouse from the human world is a river, which during the time when the gods are asleep is dried up and fills up when they start appearing, could also be connected with the idea of water purifying and separating what's considered dirty, so the human world, from what's clean and pure, the gods. These aspects of Shintoism in Miyazaki's movies are proof of his upbringing. He grew up surrounded by those beliefs and probably saw how contradicting they are to today's Japanese society or any society for that matter. Through the elements of Shintoism he chooses to use, he seems to say that the bigger separation we need from the gods and the nature, 
the more we abuse it and in consequence the more we pollute it and ourselves as well. That means that we all should probably use a little bit of ritual purification from our modern lifestyle. Even though Miyazaki is so utterly Japanese in what he presents, he is aware how far away those beliefs are from what Japan is right now. I think he probably saw how distant people have become from their own traditions and beliefs and maybe tried to convince the youngest generation to start viewing the nature a little bit more like their older ancestors rather than their parents. The ancestors that believe that the nature is there for them to rely on it, but is also sacred and should be treated as such. Although the Shinto influence present in his movies is not easily understandable for the foreign viewers, the message behind it is actually pretty universal. And to me, it's a scary thing that regardless of where you were born, we can all relate to mistreating nature.